It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. Uh, I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. Joe, it's been a while since we've uh, been at the desk. I think it was uh, last year, last time yes, we sat down together here. in 2012, I think. That's right. Uh, that'll uh, segue us into talking a little bit about what we're going to do on today's show. Uh, we'll start with the headlines, of course. There's that cliff, fiscal cliff some of us thought we were headed for. Might still be. Plenty of Vermont Yankee in the news. We'll break it down and then uh, we'll do our best of 2012 on top of that. Look back at uh, some of our favorites from that. One thing that hasn't changed is uh, we do it in 15 minutes or less. So if you've got the time and the attention span as we gear up to head on out into this 2013 weekend, stick with us. Let me be very clear, the so-called fiscal cliff agreement was not a good piece of legislation. The alternative, however, of not passing any legislation would have been much, much worse. Welcome back to this 2013 edition of 545 Live. Uh, we're going to break it down on all the happenings this uh, past 2012 year. Uh, and we'll start with that clip from our tenured Senator Bernie Sanders. All the buzz, of course, uh, there. For all of us as we were getting our 2013 party hats on getting ready to count down to new year's uh but the buzz for everybody was in fact uh, that the country might be headed off the cliff the fiscal cliff that is uh most likely into the chasm of another recession so the analysts said uh, the cliff which would have taken on the deficit through drastic tax increases and really even more drastic government spending cuts was uh as everyone now knows narrowly avoided by some 11th hour maneuvering and uh, the part of Congress, and that's given us the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012, which largely is considered a pretty left-leaning piece of legislation uh, with some permanent uh, changes in tax law that should allow the government to collect more from the country country's wealthiest 2% uh, than at any other time in the last quarter. Uh, now, uh, this is a little something that got our tenured Senator uh, Bernie Sanders hot under the collar. Uh, despite that left-leaning nature, um, though he did refer with some enthusiasm to uh, President Barack Obama's own video address she posted, which details uh, the measure's benefits for seniors, students, uh, middle class, and more. And uh, thanks to the President of the United States' official YouTube channel, uh, we can take a look at that clip as well. How's that? We extended tax credits for families with children and tuition tax credits that are helping millions of families pay for college. We extended tax credits for clean energy companies that are creating jobs and reducing our dependence on foreign oil. And we extended unemployment insurance for two million Americans who are actively looking for a job. Plenty of uh, Vermont Yankee in the news, Joe, for that. Let's uh, head on into your close-up, which means uh, that we get to put the, hopefully, the fancy graphics on Ooh. here and take a look Ooh, at that's scary. some of the, the stuff happening in the news. Take this one away. Well, all right. Well, we knew our 2012 retrospective was sure to get a healthy dose of Vermont Yankee. But less than a week in, it's looking like 2013 will be an energy heavy year as well. As this week, the technicality fraud public service board hearings continued around the plant's new blackout generator. And to add to it, UBS investment bank equity analysts today reported to the Brattleboro Reformer that their findings suggested it is highly unlikely that energy would continue to operate Vermont Yankee through its 20 year license extension, advising investors of energy's stock neutral rating in a report detailing that energy's nuclear power plants, Vermont Yankee included, have little chance of producing, quote, any meaningful cash in 2013-2014, with cash deficits projected for 2015 and 2016. That's uh, big news in this town uh, yeah, to it hear it from uh, the investment professionals. Of course, uh, they did also make a note that there may be information uh, more uh, readily available to those uh, working for Entergy Vermont Yankee that uh, they do not have. But as we mentioned, Joe, this is just a, a continuation of the the story, Vermont Yankee stories. We've been uh, involved in plenty of them over the year. We've uh, taken a little time to stack them all together for you. Let's take a look. It's been a lot of Vermont Yankee 
in the media lately. At Vermont Yankees headquarters off Putney Road, Brattleboro Police joined forces to facilitate the arrest of 130 individuals from over a dozen affinity groups. Your conduct is in violation of Title 13, trespass. Advocacy groups have turned their efforts to making public the discharge of hot water released into the Connecticut River by the plant's extensive cooling system as objectors took to the river water in question by canoe, kayak, and pontoon to shake their oars at the plant's owners in the shadow of their waterfront property. Now, as nerve-wracked legislators ponder the implications of dry cask storage, You think the plant shuts down, but then you've still got the waste to deal with, and it's not good stuff. Task forces brace for the economic blowback from the plant's eventual closure, and politicians examine the sincerity of the plant's out-of-state owners. Virginia is good at convincing Vermonters of things that aren't true. The fate of Vermont Yankee is still up in the air as Entergy awaits a decision from Vermont's Public Service Board over the issuance of a Certificate of Public Good, a requisite for continued operation upheld by Federal Judge Jay Garvin Murtha, despite his earlier verdict which overruled state legislation that would have closed the plant. It's an important case for us to appeal and long fight, okay. We'll end it there for now, though one could hypothesize that Vermont's lone nuclear reactor and its adversaries will return to the limelight again. There you go, Joe. A uh, VY fraught uh, collage. year. Yes. Collage. Uh, the VY collage. Uh, some of that underwater footage, my particular favorite if I was going to go uh, oh, yeah. solely on uh, the nature of the videography involved. The uh, flotilla. There you go. That's right. Covered by yours truly. The 545 Live News team. That was quite a day. <laughs> We're going to get back to uh, our favorites from 2012, but we got to hit the headlines first, though uh, I'll say this next one kind of falls in a category somewhere in between. We get to talk cell phone towers and new fame, which has uh, become a theme from the past year, and it's continued uh, uh, into this new year and a new series of municipal meetings um, in, uh, in the new fame realm. And for this, Joe, let's... Let's see if we can go back to you here. All right, what do we got there? Ho, oh, oh, ho, am I in there? There we go. All right, let's start in Newfane, where a beleaguered residents fresh off a standoff with AT&T over a proposed cell tower now found themselves facing the, ra facing the raising of a new tower, this time courtesy of the Burlington-based communication project headed up by VTEL, or the Vermont Telephone Company. The tower is now scheduled to be raised from the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department compound in Newfane, something Sheriff Keith Clark says will benefit everyone from cell phone users to emergency responders to taxpayers countywide. At last night's Newfane Select Board meeting, members of the board reviewed a veto letter regarding the tower's issues. In addition, uh, they uh, struck an amendment, or uh, added an amendment, uh, uh, detailing their involvement in AT&T's tower. So, two separate agenda items, two towers, one town, one meeting. Uh, you can find this up online, and it'll be available tomorrow at noon uh, on our video on demand. You can watch right. that Newfane meeting. but. Let's uh, not stop there with the description. Let's take a look at the clip. The provost AT&T tower site is located at the end of a narrow private load within a private development made up of 20 houses on two acre lots. On purchasing the lots of the Oak Hill development, the buyers are required to sign various confidence, which are part of their deed and regulate their use of the property to prevent any adverse impact on the aesthetics of their development. Again, you can uh, follow all that. Uh, by heading to brattlebrotv.org, where up on the right-hand side you'll see a, a big thing that says watch uh, local shows on demand, where you can skim through that new fan select board reading at your leisure, look for all the uh, juiciest, most controversial uh, cell phone tower-infused content. All right, Joe, uh, one of my favorite things, as we set up earlier, is to go back, look back at the year here uh, on 545 Live and uh, see how far we've come. Kind of fun uh, to think about. Uh, where we were situated, what was behind us, uh, how we uh, promoted what was coming up, all the various uh, components. Uh, now, uh, two years, two years running, uh, as we uh, really uh, in June had our one-year celebration this year. That was pretty fun. Did some live broadcasts from the street from Strolling of the Heifers. Moving down onto Main Street here was pretty cool too. Wouldn't Indeed, you say? yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've we've got a lot of positive feedback from that, and uh, occasionally you'll see somebody come up to the glass there, and make faces, uh, come find us downtown. All right. Uh, Just like the Today Show. There you go. Uh, one uh, one piece of big news worth noting from this past uh, 2012 year mm -hmm. for uh, BCTV is that they picked up. They I should say we, we picked up uh, 
a you couple were a key part of it. national uh, awards from the Alliance for Community Media, which is the uh, national group of uh, community access stations, just like ours. They get together, and folks from uh, all 50 states submit their content. And uh, our summer camp kids, uh, responsible for the film Double Trouble, picked up uh, the award for best original teleplay in the nation. Uh, in fact, when we do a retrospective clip, I, I think you'll hear me say these exact things again. We also uh, do a, a little montage every year of everything that's showed at BCTV. That took away an award for the best uh, About Access video. So uh, Cor Trowbridge, our executive director, and myself, we got to head out to Chicago to their conference Ooh, and uh, pick up some sitting. glass uh, plaques uh, in person there. It's quite a time. Uh, let's let's watch the, the highlight video. Let's, uh, let's roll it. Double Trouble walked away with best original teleplay in the nation. We're here today in Chicago at the ACM conference. Tomorrow night we're going to be receiving BCTV's two awards. And the award goes to BCTV's Video Camp Spectacular. What do you know about the cloning epidemic in town? Zip it! I can't believe it's up to me to save the world again. Very efficient. I concur. All right, and let's not forget that 2012 saw the only transit of Venus any of us will see in our lifetime, something that prompted 545 Live intergalactic news correspondent Frederick Noyes to report on directly from outer space. Hey, Roland, I'm up here in the International Space Station. And if you can see just behind me here in the window, that is actually our sun uh, with some uh, fancy filters over it. And uh, that little dot traversing it is the planet Venus. That's Frederick Noyes, intergalactic space correspondent from the Intergalactic Space Station BCTV Satellite Remote Station. That was even harder than getting mm -hmm. live video from the football field. <laughs> right. Shockingly, as hard as that is. All right, uh, a few things to uh, talk about before we wrap up here. Joe, uh, we're going to get the weather from BUHS-TV, uh, the high school's morning news advisory uh, program, as they've returned back from their school vacation yeah. as well. We're going to do that in uh, just a moment, find out what's happening uh, over the weekend. But first, uh, we've added a, a new way of shameless self-promotion. That is our uh, new on BCTV feature, and we're going to start by promoting Sufi Wisdom Series. It's a very important time for that kind of internal straightness, a very important time for being the one to take the responsibility. You can watch that tomorrow at 11.15. And then there's a live BHS uh, girls basketball coming up next Tuesday. It's going to be live at 7.15. It's good for three. Yeah. Nine nothing, rattle ball, 4.17 into the first quarter. There you go, just a few of the things uh, coming up on BCTV on our Comcast channels. This one here, you're watching 8, and our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, just two clicks up the dial. All right, uh, let's hit that weather, find out what's going on for the weekend uh, before we uh, roll on out of here and let you enjoy it. All right. Tomorrow it's going to be a little bit sunny out there. High of 29, low of 16. Get your jackets out, going to be a little nippy. Back to the desk. Joe. Uh, welcome to a new year here at 545 Live. I'm glad you're uh, here at the desk with me. Uh, and all you viewers out there who've uh, decided to make it your New Year's resolution to continue to watch 545 Live, we sure appreciate that. Everybody else that makes us uh, tick the way we do as a show, including uh, Vlasta Papelka, our public relations specialist, uh, content producers Maria Dominguez, Rich Melanson, and everybody else out there working to uh, bring the 545 Live dream to life. Thanks, everyone. Um, that's all I got, Joe. Good night now. Good night. Good night, Chet. Good night, David. <laughs> and it's not going to happen again for about 105 years. Interestingly, uh, several hundred years ago, when telescopes were first invented, um, they used the transit of Venus to determine the size and scope of the uh, solar system. So uh, it was a very important uh, event uh, when it was first seen.